The birth of Christ fulfills God's promise to his people, Israel. The royal lineage of Jesus is the utmost importance to the evangelist Matthew. He begins his gospel in such a way as to show the work of God through human history, culminating in the fulfillment of revelation. Found in Jesus Christ, this context prepares us for the stories of the birth, life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ as God's perfect plan for all salvation of the entire world. Rejoice, O heavens, and exalt, O earth, for our Lord will come to show mercy to his poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This morning we offer Mass for Sadie Jordan. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who willed that your word should take flesh in an ever-virgin womb. Look with favor on our prayers that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. You, Judah, shall your brothers praise, your hand on the neck of your enemies. The sons of your father shall bow down to you, Judah, like a lion's whelp. You have grown up on prey, my son. He crouches like a lion recumbent, the king of beasts who would dare rouse him. The scepter shall never depart from Judah, or the mace from between his legs. While tribute is brought to him, and he receives the people's homage, the word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in his time, in fulfillment of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. 
He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children from the poor. poor. Justice shall flower, flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his name be blessed forever, as long as a son his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed, all the nations shall proclaim his happiness. stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amminadab. Amminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amos, Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abiad. Abiad became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok became the father of Achim, Achim the father of Eliad, Eliad the father of Eleazar, Eleazar became the father of Mathon, Mathon became the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. Thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. That's the hardest gospel, I think, for any clergy to have to proclaim. There are some priests and deacons that avoid it, and if any way to avoid it, they avoid it. So why does Matthew start his gospel that way? Well, Matthew's speaking to a Jewish audience for whom it is very important that the Messiah be shown to be of the house of David. And tracing him back to Abraham is even, even better, and to show this symmetry, this 14, 14, 14, would have been very important to a Jewish audience. But okay, but is any of this really true? 
Is the story of Jesus even true? How do we know? Well, we can look and see that two ancient historians, Josephus and Tacitus, made a mention of Jesus in their, in their historical writings. This Jesus did exist, and those historians reference him. Now, Jesus was a, a, what, we, what one author called a marginal Jew. I mean, he was born in, in, almost anonymously in a little out-of-the-way town, in a little out-of-the-way country, in a little out-of-the-way place in the world. But yet, we still believe in him today. So how do we know? What proof do we have besides these two historical mentions? Well, think about the apostles. So there were 12 original apostles, right? Now, one of them betrayed Jesus. Judas did that, right? So let's set Judas aside. So of the other 11, what happened to those other 11? Yes. Do you remember what happened to the other 11? One of them lived a very long life, right? John. John had to take care of the blessed mother, so John lived a very long life. But of the other 10, what happened to them? Anybody know? What happened to the other 10? They were all killed for their faith. Every single one of those 10. They all died for their faith. If this was a made-up story, would they all have gone to their death rather than deny Christ, rather than deny that he was the Messiah, rather than deny this story? I mean, if it was a made-up story, wouldn't they have recanted? Wouldn't they have said, no, no, I'm just kidding, to save their own life? They didn't do that. Every one of those ten died for their faith. Some of you may know that I, I, I've been making up a story in the last couple of weeks. I told people that somebody stole our bell. Some people actually believed me at first, but I corrected it quickly. Some of you may, may have seen the company out there with the lift taking down the bell, so you know otherwise. But I, I certainly wasn't going to go to my death over the story of the bell, that's for sure. Every one of those ten died rather than recanting their faith, rather than denying Christ. And we look at what's happened since. Human institutions don't survive very long. Even the Roman Empire lasted a few hundred years, but then it too fell by the wayside. Human institutions don't last that long. It's been two, almost 2,000, it's been over 2,000 years since Christ's birth. It's been almost 2,000 years since his death. And are there just a handful of people that believe? No. Do we count it in the thousands? No. Do we count it in the hundreds of thousands? No. Do we count believers even in the millions? No. We count them in the billions. Billions of people 2,000 years later believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Some of you may be thinking, okay, well, you know, what time's lunch? What's the Christmas party going to be like? But if this Jesus is real, if what John said is true, for God so loved his son that he sent him into the world that, that all who believe in him might be saved, and he did not condemn, come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it, if all that's true, and the evidence is that it's true, right? If all that is true, does it make a difference? This season as we celebrate Christmas, what are we really celebrating? We're celebrating Jesus. And does his existence does the fact that God came into our world to save us make a difference? Yes, it makes everything different. It makes all the difference.
you stand? As we prepare our hearts for Christ's coming, we present our petitions to the Father. For all the members of the church, may the light of Christ remove all darkness and sin from our mightiest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For world leaders, may the justice and mercy of the Holy Spirit guide them in their service to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families and communities whose members are estranged from one another, may Christ bring them healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the grace we receive this Advent help us bear good fruit during Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Epiphany Catholic School, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayers. For all who have gone before us in faith, may they receive their final inheritance in Christ's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. prayer. And for Sadie Jourdain, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you for sending your Son into the world as one like us, so that we could become your adopted sons and daughters. Hear and answer our prayers, we ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify these gifts of your church, O Lord, and grant that through these venerable mysteries we may be nourished with the bread of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna and highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Philippe, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Behold, the desired of all the nations will come, and the house of the Lord will be filled with glory.
please stand. Nourished by these divine gifts, Almighty God, we ask you to grant our desire that aflame with your spirit we may shine like bright torches before your Christ when he comes, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.
In the year 1531, Juan Diego woke before sunrise. It was Saturday, Our Lady's Day, the 9th of December, the first day in the octave of the Immaculate Conception, and quite cold in the mountains of Mexico at that time of year. Wrapping his cloak or tilma about him, Juan set off. He was on his way to Mass, which he had faithfully attended every Saturday and Sunday since his conversion six years before. It was a long journey for anyone to make two days in a row. That's 24 miles of walking, and his aging limbs were beginning to feel the toll. The trip seemed so much longer since his wife and traveling companion, Maria Lucia, had died two years ago. Now he walked the road alone, but being alone had its advantages. It gave him the time to think and talk to God. The good friars had taught him well how to do that. It was still dusky, not too far from dawn, as he approached Tipiak Hill. Suddenly he heard the beautiful singing of birds. There stood a woman who shone like the sun. She spoke of him with love. She told him that she is the mother of God, the God who created everything. I want to show my love for the poor and needy. She asked him to go to the bishop and asked him to build a church on that very spot so she could help all who needed her protection. Juan Diego did as asked and went to deliver the message to the bishop. The bishop believed him but told him he needed a sign from God to prove that what he said was true. On December 12th, Juan Diego agreed to ask the lady for a sign. But the next day there was an emergency. His uncle was dying from a high fever. Juan Diego could not go back to the lady. He needed to bring a priest to pray with his uncle. He walked around the hill so that he wouldn't meet her, but soon she was there anyway. Mary comforted Juan Diego and asked him to trust her as his mother. His uncle would be healed. Juan Diego trusted her. He told her how the bishop had said that he would need a sign from God, but Mary had the answer. She asked Juan Diego to go up the hill. There he would see roses growing, and he was to gather them. She was right. Even though there was frost on the ground, Many sweet-smelling roses were growing on the rocky, thorny hilltop. Surely the bishop would believe the sign. Mary arranged the roses in Juan Diego's cloak. Carefully, he carried them all the way to the city. When he arrived to see the bishop, the servants tried to take a look at what he was carrying, but he refused to show them and told them it was the sign the bishop had asked for. Once in the presence of the bishop, Juan Diego opened his cloak and was shocked to see the bishop and his servants kneeling in front of him. He looked down and saw the image of the beautiful lady. Her image was that of a mestiza, not Spanior, not Aztec. She stood on the moon and in front of the sun, her veil covered in stars. Her hands folded together as in prayer and looking down, acknowledging there is one greater than she, our Lord. She called herself Guadalupe, which is a deformation of the Guadalupe, which means the one who crushes the serpent. The crusher of the serpent is the one predicted in the book of Genesis. From that day, everything changed. Within 10 years, almost the entire Mexican nation converted to Christianity. Nine million people. That's 3,000 people per day times 10 years. Millions of people visit the shrine every year in prayer of supplication, penance, and gratitude. Some on their knees, others traveling great distances by foot. Her image remains intact and so ever breathtaking. La Morenita, as we call her, the Dark One, 
is our protector and our mother. She never takes the place of God, but leads us to God and teaches us about his love. Our Lady of Guadalupe is the patroness of the Americas.